Welcome back to Tia House Farm. Adrian is here again because today we are going to be making sushi ginger, uh, which is like basically pickled ginger. It's sweet and spicy and tangy and it's delicious on sushi and other Asian inspired meals and I really like it. Do you eat it? Do you eat a lot of... Oh, I love sushi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we are not making sushi today. I've actually never tried that. Have you ever made sushi? I've never. I think you need a little rolly thing. And, yeah. But... I always just buy it from... Like, Aldi has frozen sushi. I don't know if you knew that. And it's actually decent. I mean, it's not like, you know, if you had it really made. But, like, it's good. And so, but it never comes with the ginger. So, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to make our own. It's going to be fun. And then we're going to make some Korean spice cookies to use up the random Korean chili pepper powder that we had to buy to make kimchi a while ago. And I think it'll be good. Adrian is coming to us direct from the dentist. Are you a dental anxiety person, or do you not mind the dentist? I don't mind so much. Yeah, it's not bad. Not too bad. I just take deep breaths. I'm good. And we also get lots of questions whenever you're on, is when are you going to start your own YouTube channel? Oh, <laughs> man. That's so much work. It is. <sighs> In case you didn't know, Adrian uh, is an awesome, do you, go, do you use the term counselor or therapist? Either there? one. Yeah, both of them count. Yeah. So she's already got a, a full-time job, and she's got two little kids, too, mm -hmm. so... Pretty busy, but maybe one day in the future, and we will be your first subscriber. Yes. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, we fed the kids lunch. We made a kid grazing tray. They've got some fruit and veggies, muffins, lunch meat, crackers, chips. They should need for nothing, hopefully, in the next little bit, so we could try to try to do this. Should be pretty simple. Let's see what we can do. All right. I guess let's pack. You want to pack them in half? Uh, yeah, I didn't bring anything. Um, I got, I think it'll only make more, but I'll grab six just in case. Because canning mess never works out, right? To get started, we just want to prep our jars. So this actually isn't a canned recipe. It's going to stay in the fridge, but you still want to make sure you have clean, sterile jars because it's going to be in the fridge a really long time. So go ahead and wash our jars with hot soapy water. We're going to do some half pints today. And then we're also going to do the same with the lids and the rings. And then we're going to fill up a small stock pot with some water, put our jars in it, and we're going to bring that to a boil and then simmer the jars for 10 minutes. This will sterilize them and then we'll just leave them in the hot water until we are ready to make our sushi ginger. Adrian gets started with peeling the ginger. We read that it was easiest to do it with a spoon actually and I forgot to ask her if she felt this was easier but it seemed to work pretty well. The spoon can get in the nooks and the crannies a lot easier than a potato peeler can. So she peeled it and then I took the peeled ginger and I went ahead and I sliced it. I first tried just a potato peeler but I don't know I just felt like it wasn't working real well and it kept slipping. I was afraid I was gonna cut my fingers. So I went ahead and I found the mandolin slicer and I sliced it real thin. Now the recipe calls for young ginger. I don't really have access to that where I'm at. So this is just good old fashioned ginger from Walmart. After I sliced it, I went ahead and diced it even smaller on the cutting board just to get the pieces nice and small like I like them on my sushi. And then we put it in a bowl and we're going to add some uh, canning or pickling salt. You really just want non-iodized salt. That's the important part. Um, you don't have to worry so much about the type. Just make sure it's not iodized. And we added several teaspoons and then we let it sit for about five minutes. And while it was sitting, I put out a flour sack towel and some dehydrator racks just so we have a place to put the ginger when it's really hot. We're gonna blanch the ginger for three minutes. You only do it one to two minutes if it's young ginger, three minutes if it's just regular ginger because it's a lot more bitter. And after that three minutes, I drain it. And then we're gonna place it out on our dehydrator racks. We're not dehydrating the ginger. We just need it to, to cool down and evaporate some of that moisture from being blanched. If you don't have dehydrator racks, you could just lay it straight out on a towel or a paper towel. That's what it looks like. And we're just gonna let it sit for probably 15 minutes. And while it's sitting, we're gonna go ahead and get started making the brine. So to make the brine, we did one pound of ginger. For the right amount of brine for one pound of ginger, we are using two cups of rice vinegar. We're using one and one third cups of sugar, two teaspoons worth of salt. We are gonna bring that to a boil and let it go for about five minutes until the vinegar smell isn't real strong. You do wanna make sure you use rice vinegar. Don't cheat on that. You need to get the rice vinegar. 
I'm gonna take the jars out of the water they've been sitting in and go ahead and pack them with the ginger. Leave plenty of headspace because you wanna make sure you can fit lots of brine in your jars. I ended up needing four half pints, which is what the recipe had called for, so that worked out really well. And there's our brine ready to go. And we're gonna go ahead and cover the ginger. We're gonna use a bamboo skewer to go ahead and poke out any air that might be trapped in the jars to make sure that that brine is surrounding all of the ginger pieces in the jar. Then we're gonna go ahead and get our lids, which are also clean and sterile, and we're gonna place them on top of our half pints. Again, this is not going to be canned. This is going to sit in the refrigerator, a lot like a refrigerator pickle but it's gonna last a really long time because we've made sure that all of our equipment is clean and sterile and we won't be growing any bacteria or mold in our jars. They need to sit on the counter for a couple hours according to the recipe before we refrigerate them, so we're just gonna leave them like that and head outside. We are letting our sushi ginger cool down and then it's gotta go in the fridge and according to the recipe, it can stay in the fridge up to a year, so it won't last that long. <laughs> But it also happens to randomly be the solar eclipse day. So the girls made some eclipse viewers and Adrian brought a couple pairs of eclipse glasses. It's getting close. And it's getting about, we're getting close to halfway. I don't feel like it feels any darker yet, do you? So that tells you how bright the sun is. It's like, it's a foil contraption. It's not very complicated. Here, it's, uh, I don't know if the phone will be able to see it. We could try. Put your eye through it. So the sun goes through this little pinhole and it projects into the box. Let's see if the, I don't know if the camera will be able to focus. Let me find it first. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of. You see that little dot in there? But it's not a perfect circle anymore. It's like a, you can see the moon taking over the sun. It's like a happy eating cookie. So that way you can look at the eclipse without looking at the eclipse so you don't hurt your eyes. Okay, we'll try with the glasses. I tried the glasses. Right. Wait, I don't know that this will work. With the eclipse glasses. Here. I wanna wear see it See if now. the camera can do it. Here, I wanna see if the phone can see it, okay? TJ. Here we go. All right, so it, should, it looks completely dark. Oh yeah, it does work. There it is. Can I sit on the phone? I'll show you. I'll show you later. But can you? Want to take a video of me using them? Go ahead. Show me how they work. Your foot's broken. So while we're waiting for the eclipse to get to 100% uh, there, we're going to go ahead and make our Korean red pepper cookies. So I'm going to link the full recipe below. We didn't follow the recipe to a T because it involved marbling the red pepper into the cookie dough and we didn't have time for that. So we actually just add it. So with the red pepper, we made a paste out of it there with just the dried red pepper flakes that we use for making kimchi and a little bit of water is all we did. The rest of the cookie is basically just a sugar cookie. It wasn't real fancy and um, the dough came together real easily and it had this really, really bright red color. So we were kind of unsure about how spicy these were gonna be, but it was a fun thing to try. So we thought we'd make them and then we'd let everyone try one while we watched the eclipse. We didn't quite get the totality, but we were pretty close where we are. And so it was kind of a fun experience for the kids. He's gonna tell me when the eclipse is happening when I'm- Can I make you? All right, back up, Ivy. Can I have a view of my key? Here, explain it. To the camera. So here's the, um, normally these would be little ball, little circles, but because it's eclipse, they look like little crescents. They're all over. I can't see, see them in here. See the little crescents? You can't see them in your glasses, no. Yeah. We aren't uh, quite to totality yet. We're about halfway, but if you listen, I'll stop talking in a second. If you listen, you'll hear that you do not hear any frogs or chirping. And usually, uh, there's a pond kind of behind me. Usually, it's incredibly loud. Um, and so, I think the animals know that it's starting to get dark. No frogs? Okay. Who wants to try a Korean spice cookie? Oh, sweet. I'm ready to try it at the same time. 
Okay, let's break one. Yeah, maybe you should break them in half. You break find a partner. Like smoothie. Go get your Here, take a piece. Try. We'll just try a piece. And if you like it, you can have more. Don't eat it yet. Don't eat it yet. Oh my god, don't eat it yet. We're gonna try it. We'll try it together. Two, one, go. Well, if you like it, you can have your own. Okay, you said it's a slow burn. No, you don't taste it at first. It just tastes like gum. It's good. Honey water! We should find cat with it. Take some. Mommy, mommy, mommy. It does. Then the like tingle creeps up. Oops, there goes my cookie. Tingle creeps up across your tongue. I kind of like that though. It's like sweet and savory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna try. I made a sushi, deconstructed sushi bowl. So it's white rice on the bottom, there's cucumber, carrot, some imitation crab, and I made a sriracha mayonnaise, which is literally just sriracha and mayo. And we're gonna put some of our ginger on top. It says technically you both wait 24 hours, best flavor. It's been like six, but I'm too curious. So we're gonna try it. It's, it smells exactly like the stuff from the store. And I think we did a pretty good job getting the slices thin. So just put a little bit. Let's try it. That's good. I like that. I'm gonna keep making this. I think I'm gonna use it for this kind of thing. I really like stuff like this for like lunch because it's filling, but it's got a vegetable in it. Um, also use it for like, um, like if I make seafood salad, um, sandwiches, things like that. I don't know, what else do you think this would be good on? It's got a nice little kick, but it's pretty sweet. Maybe, um, maybe in like noodle dishes too. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all next time.